Hello and welcome to my video covering the cell cycle. The cell cycle has five major phases and this lecture will be an introduction to what's going on in each of those phases. You can think of the cell cycle as kind of the life cycle of a cell. Um, somewhat like you'd think of a human life cycle from birth all the way through death so to speak. The phases of the cell cycle are the G1, S, G2, M, and C phase. G1 stands for gap 1, S for the synthesis phase, G2 for gap 2, M for mitosis, and C for cytokinesis. As you can see from the picture, G1, S, and G2 collectively make up what's called interphase. This is where a cell spends about 90% of its life. The G1 phase is, gap 1 phase, is mainly just uh, daily life of the cell, if you want to think of it that way. It's a cell doing what a cell normally does. So the daily life of a liver cell, a heart cell, uh, um, which actually stays in this phase, uh, or the daily life of, of any cell, skin cell going through is just normal daily functions. Uh, protein synthesis is high during this time. Uh, the proteins are going to vary from cell type to cell type. Obviously the proteins produced by a liver cell are not identical to the ones produced by a skin cell. Uh, new organelles such as ribosomes are being produced and it's during this phase you're going to make the enzymes or the proteins that are needed for the synthesis phase. So you're making the stuff that's going to be needed for the very next step. It does have a checkpoint and we'll be talking about checkpoints a little bit later. Synthesis phase is going to take an entirely different lecture to explain the ins and outs of this phase. Basically all you really need to know right now is this is just DNA replication. Uh, the normal protein synthesis slows down. Uh, some proteins that are going to be made called histones or little tiny proteins that DNA wraps itself around to form chromosomes. It takes about five to eight hours to copy your DNA. Uh, you're going to need two complete sets of DNA if you're going to divide a cell uh, ultimately the goal of cell cycle is cell division. You're going to split the cell in half getting two equal size cells. Here's a quick overview of the synthesis phase and you can just look at the picture and see it's kind of messy. Uh, there's a leading strand and a lagging strand. The leading strand is copied continuously. Uh, you've got DNA polymerase here doing the copying. Uh, this would be adenine pairing with thymine, cytosine pairing with guanine. You've got a old strand and a new strand on this side. An old strand and a new strand on that side and when you finish this off you're gonna have a whole complete copy over here and a complete copy over here. This of course is done in many little replication bubbles all around the cell. Uh, there's lots of these going on when you're copying your DNA. It's not just one set of proteins or anything like that. Uh, you got DNA helicase, which is unwinding the DNA, the single-stranded binding proteins holding it open so it doesn't rewind and form its double helix. Uh, you've got primers being put in over here. So it's a lot of different proteins that are involved in the replication of DNA. G2 phase is just gap 2. It's uh, pretty much synopsized by saying preparations for division. The microtubules that the chromosomes are going to walk down during anaphase are being produced here. There's a big safety checkpoint for the G2 phase where it's called the G2 checkpoint where you're going to double check DNA replication and make sure everything went okay with that. So you're preparing the cell for division getting equal numbers of, of cellular parts on both sides and, and things of that nature. Mitosis will be covered in a different lecture. For now we'll just look at the definition of mitosis which is the division of the nucleus. It comes in several phases. You've got prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In the mitosis lecture, you'll learn the details of what's going on in each of these phases, but for now, base definition of the M phase, division of the nucleus. Here's a quick overview of mitosis. You can see the phases. You've got prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You can see the chromosomes being pulled apart here in anaphase. They're all lined up over here in metaphase. If you look at just a normal cell, you see it's got a nucleus and you can't really see chromosomes. You see a bunch of blue stuff in there. That's chromatin or DNA in its unwound state. This is what DNA looks like after you wind it up around all those little histones that you produced uh, back in your G phases. 
Cytokinesis is your final step of the cell cycle. It is the division of the cytoplasm or cytosol. It's controlled once again by proteins. Uh, I keep repeating the protein thing, and you know, in a previous lecture, you'll learn DNA codes for proteins. Proteins do everything. That's the basis of life on this planet. So this contractile ring, of course, pinches the cell in half. Uh, it's done a little bit differently in plants and animals. Plants actually have a cell wall. You can see this real thick, rigid cell wall here that animals do not have. So these cells in a plant can't pinch in half. What you actually have to do to get two new plant cells is build a new cell wall right down the middle. And that's how you get two new cells. Uh, for us, for animal cells, we can just pinch our cells right in half. Remember this plasma membrane is very fluid in nature. The fluid mosaic model, so it's much like pinching a bubble in half. Now, these images were taken, of course, with electron microscopes. That's how you can see such you know, really good detail here. Um, now, plant cells obviously divide quite a bit. If you've ever been to the redwood forest, you've seen how big trees can get, and that's a heck of a lot of cell division. Um, cell division as a whole, of course, growth, repair, all these things are vital for it. Uh, this goes on in our bodies continuously. Uh, you're always getting new skin cells, new blood cells, so the cell cycle is quite common. If you're looking at control of the cell cycle, if it loses control, if you have uncontrolled cell division, we call that cancer. So there's several checkpoints, which of course involve proteins that are set up along the way to make sure everything is controlled and cell division doesn't just start happening unchecked, which would be cancer. Obviously, these checkpoints do not always work. Uh, there are mutations in the genes that code for the proteins that control these checkpoints. Now, those genes can be called oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes. And failures in checkpoints is what actually would cause cancer. Your first checkpoint, G1, involves some proteins called cyclins and cyclic-dependent kinases. They're the controlling factors, and basically, if uh, they're activated, then you're going to proceed into the S phase, um, and they're going to activate those proteins that are going to function in the S phase, like the helicases and the polymerases. Uh, if they do not do their job, then the cell enters G0, which is a non-dividing phase, and cell division will never occur. In G2, it's a different set of proteins, a little bit. Maturation promoting factors, combination of a cyclin and a cyclin-dependent kinase. It allows the cell to enter into mitosis make sure the DNA is not too damaged. Um, this is basically a checkpoint to make sure that the S phase did its job. Here's a quick picture of a cyclin in a CDK. It just kind of shows the two binding here to form the maturation promoting factor that's going to basically control the G2 checkpoint in the cell cycle. The M checkpoint is a spindle checkpoint. You're looking for mess ups in attachment. Uh, the chromosomes actually attach to the mitotic spindle, which was made of microtubules. Uh, they attach at these points called the kinetochore, which is located in the centromere of the chromosomes. Uh, failures in attachment can cause lots of problems. Um, cells can end up getting too many chromosomes or too few chromosomes, and there's many, many diseases where there is a failure in attachment. Probably one of the most famous ones right off the bat is trisomy 21, where when you're dividing in uh, meiosis, actually, not mitosis, uh, the cell gets too many chromosomes uh, of chromosome number 21, and that's actually what causes Down syndrome as a whole. Tumor suppressor genes. I picked out a couple that are pretty famous, P53 and P27. I'd, I'd say just Google these and, and take a look. Uh, they're very heavily studied because mutations in these are actually known to cause cancer, and, of course, Cancer is uncontrolled cell division, so uh, these genes and these proteins that are involved with them are looked at heavily uh, for the hopes of producing some kind of medication that could block um, mutations in them or, or something like that to help cure cancer one day.